Hey y'all and welcome to Monarch's Market and welcome to my Trash to Treasure Garbage Find Flips video. I am going to show you what I found in the trash, turned into treasure, and then I'm going to tell you about Blexi Spot. I cannot wait to tell you about them and what they sent me to show you. It is amazing. Now let's get into DIY number one and we'll get back to that in a few minutes, y'all. Look at this. Are you kidding me? This thing is 24 inches long. 24 inches long and 15 inches, well, let me rephrase that, 24 inches wide and 14 inches tall. So this is literally door cabinets that I found on the street corner in someone's trash. They were laying right on the top of a closed garbage can. There were four of them and I knew trash was running that day at the place I was going to. And I was like, you know what? I better get them right now because they're not going to be there when I get back. So I grabbed all four of them for free. And it just so happened that I had just ordered me some of this salt wash. Now, I'm a little aggravated at myself that I wasn't in camera here. But you're really not going to miss anything. But that salt wash is a powder that you mix with any kind of paint you mix it together and you make like a paste or like a i think mine was a little too thick it still worked beautifully anyway but it should like kind of drip off of the end of your stick and mine was a little bit thicker than that but it actually worked very pretty now i'm going to be using that moss paint by waverly that i just showed you and i mixed the salt wash in with my paint and that's me just kind of wiping everything down when you take the salt wash you put it on this brush that came with it and you want to daub 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 and just like dab it all over everything and you want to make those little peaks right there those little things that are sticking up in the air you want it to be like that so Whenever I was putting it on, I thought, you know what? I don't even need to cover this because it was actually beautiful just like that. Look at that. But anyway, just before it gets dry, when it's like still a little tacky, you want to take the sanding block that comes with it and sort of just knock those peaks down. You don't want to sand too much. Now, I didn't want to waste any salt wash on the bottom of it because you're not going to see the bottom of it. So I literally just flipped it over once that was dry and painted it with this um, moss paint with no salt wash in it. So once that dried and I flipped it back over, I went in with some white Waverly chalk paint and I just gave it one really good coat of chalk paint all over the top. Again, I'm not going to like waste a whole bunch of paint that nobody's going to see on the bottom of this tray and that's what i'm turning this old cabinet door into is a gorgeous tray that you just saw so i'm just going to take the white waverly chalk paint i'm going to cover the whole thing and once we get it covered and let it dry i set it aside and let it dry actually i think i let it dry overnight but god i did that but anyway painted the bottom white but I did not use the salt wash. That's what it was. I didn't use the salt wash. I did paint the bottom, though, as you see. Um, which really helps when you go to sand it down. Because then you see both of those colors on the bottom. Just like you do on the top. But anyway, once I got it all painted with that white Waverly chalk paint. I gave it... Gave, gave, blah, 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 blah. Here we go. And we ain't even five minutes into the freaking video. <laughs> Getting tongue-tied. Anyway, I gave it two coats, and then once it dried, watch the magic, y'all. I'm taking a sanding block, and I am sanding down all over this whole entire door front. And when you do that, that salt wash on the bottom breaks through that. Look at that stuff flying everywhere. It breaks through the paint and it is just beautiful now i wanted to take a little bit more of that moss green and distress it up a little bit because i didn't i didn't have the proper sponge um 
sanding sponge so I couldn't get enough of that white paint off but you'll see in the end it's gorgeous just the way it is but I did want a little bit more of the green showing so I took that that moss and just barely 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 distressed all over it you see I didn't get real heavy-handed at all I just sort of hit the high spots and gave it a little bit more green to look at then I also took some antique wax and went in and did basically the same thing I'm doing with the moss here and I just sort of distressed it kind of all over and it gave it a little bit of depth and dimension so now I'm going to take Mod Podge and y'all I am going to put the most gorgeous tissue paper on here that you have ever ever seen I got it from Amazon I will leave it linked below now both of these sheets they are huge um, they are actually made to go one on top of the other to make like this big whole huge piece however I didn't need the whole thing on here because I'm just gonna do the middle of my tray but is that not stunning it is so pretty so what I did is I got it kind of where I wanted the prettiness of that print and that's where I decided to sort of mark where I was going to cut it at. And then I cut it. Now, this is called tissue paper, but it's super thick. It's more like a dryer sheet would feel. Like you can't, you know, tear it too easy, but yet you can tear it if you pull hard enough. Same with this. And all you do is you put your some Mod Podge down or some polycrylic or whatever other clear medium that you want to use to put it down with but for me I'm using the Mod Podge and I put it all over the bottom a good generous coat laid this down and what I loved about it is it's thick so thick that it didn't just wrinkle all the pieces like tissue tissue paper does there was not one single wrinkle in this thing and once I got it down then I took more Mod Podge went not only all over the top of my tissue paper but also all over the whole entire piece itself to get it all sealed in and to give it a really nice finish that was consistent all around the whole piece and look at how beautiful that is coming together already for free other than of course my tissue paper that i've had for quite a while i'm just going to show you a little quickie look y'all is that not beautiful look at the salt wash cracking through that white paint y'all it is just stunning absolutely beautiful oh i love it love 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 it i just wanted to show you that before i went on to the next step but isn't that just beautiful again it'll be linked below so the next thing i'm going to do is i am going to take this gorgeous mold here all of this, like I said, will be linked in my Amazon storefront below in the description box. Then I took my absolute favorite DOS clay. Y'all, this stuff is so easy to work with. It's so soft. I have made so many things with this particular block, and I've only used half of it. And I mean, I've used a lot of it. Like, you know what I mean? Made a lot of things with it. And there is still... A half a block to make tons and tons more so it's amazing amazing quality and it's a great bargain anyway I'm going to use these little ornamental pieces right here because I just thought that tray needed a little bit of something else so I almost did it on the top and the bottom but then I thought no because that's gonna be too much you know what I mean so once it was dry I took all three paints and I just sort of give it, you know, pretty decent coat of the moss, but on the same hand, I didn't cover it 100%. Then I took some of the white Waverly chalk paint in between, you know, like when, once it dried, took some white Waverly chalk paint and put on top of the green, just sort of dabbed it on there. And then so that it all mixed together and blended together, I took a little bit of the antique wax and sort of hit the high spots on it to bring it all together with the same paint theme that was already on the tray. And I'm so glad that I added this. I was a little bit torn about whether I should add it or not, but I was tickled to death 
whenever it was done and it just added this little flair of elegance to it that oh my gosh I just love it and every time I would get to another spot to where I was like oh yeah that's pretty oh oh that's even better like I just kept thinking and it was free and it was free everything else that I'm using on this tray I already had at home in my stash and did not have to buy one single thing to make this tray and I'm telling you right now as big as this sucker is I would be willing to buy it off of Etsy or somewhere myself knowing it was handmade like this and I would give a good $80 easy without even hesitating because it's solid wood it's not particle board even the insert on the you know where the tray part is that is all solid wood so it you know i mean 80 bucks would be a bargain but look at these gorgeous handles now i got these again off of amazon quite a while back and i've never found anything that i wanted to use them on but this i thought was perfect for those handles because they're so fancy and elegant and in my opinion this whole tray is fancy and elegant so i measured out where i wanted to put my handles on i screwed my pilot holes in and then i switched out my tips for the bigger tip to you know go in because you want to do a pilot hole first to make your hole because it's just it's well for me it's easier that way i guess i could have used the tip that i needed but i would have drilled and drilled and drilled and save yourself some time and aggravation by doing a little pilot hole then switching your tip out and going back in and using the right one now I'm simply going to attach my handles. Once my handles are attached, this little gorgeous mama is done. And it was free, 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 free. Other than, like I said, the things that I had already bought in the past and already had it in my stash. So I'm going to consider it free. But to me, it's just so beautiful and so elegant and so fancy. Like I would love to show this at any um event or like party or whatever and serve maybe some crackers and cheese and grapes and wine or whatever i don't personally drink wine but it would be pretty on the tray if you are a wine drinker but look at how beautiful that salt wash made that wood i am obsessed with this salt wash y'all I am not being sponsored. They did not send that to me. I bought it myself, but I am that much in love with the salt wash. Look at those handles, y'all. Are those things not just screaming fancy? I love it. Look at how pretty these are. Now, while I finish showing you this, let me tell you who I'm fixing to introduce you to. You have probably heard of them. It is called Flexi Spot. When you hear a flexi spot, what do you think of? Those ergonomic tables that they have, the desk that rise up and down so you can stand up like, you know, I've had several back surgeries and so has my husband. Let me show you what they sent me. It was not a desk. It was this amazing recliner. So they have gotten into recliners. They have beds, like adjustable beds. They have adjustable tables. They have adjustable desk. It's crazy. Like it's, they have just expanded like crazy and their quality of their items are ridiculous. Now what I'm showing you right here is this chair comes with two different remotes. The one on the left show does the movement, like raises the feet, you know, raises and lowers the head. And the one on the right has massage and heat and it targets from your head to your feet like you can literally push any button to get massaged from your head to your feet and you can put the heat wherever you want it i'm showing you right here how quick and easy it was this chair came in four pieces and it went together so smooth so easy now my husband helped me only because he wanted to it was so easy to do that I was able to put it together by myself. But, you know, he loves helping me do this kind of stuff. There are two connections, one for each of the different remotes. Super easy to put together and so daggum comfortable. Once you got it all together, it comes with these two little wheelie bars to keep you from flipping backwards. And you plug it in and you are ready to go. 
look at how beautiful that chair is. I mean, it is gorgeous. It comes with literally step-by-step instructions, and it tells you which each remote does. And I just I cannot say enough good about it. Lila decided she wanted to show you what the chair does. Now, we had just gotten back from the beach. I did throw some clothes on to do this little video, but bless her heart, she was still in her bathing suit. But this chair lays completely flat, completely flat, like you can sleep in that chair and it is so comfortable. Now, what I did not tell her was that that is a lift chair. So as she's going up, I wish you could have seen her face because it was so cute. As she started raising in the air, she was like, I literally don't know what's happening right now. Right about there. <laughs> she's like, what's happening? Anyway, it's a lift chair and my husband's having major back surgery in two weeks. So this came at the best time it could have ever come. It is soft. It is beautiful. And everything that you need to know about it is going to be listed down in my description box below. Trust me, if you're in the market for a recliner, this is a recliner you want. I'm obsessed with this recliner. It's got a little pocket right there. It's got a little piece of Velcro right there that I didn't take time to pull out. But I mean, it's just amazing that you can run your string through and have your little remote right there. It's just perfect. I mean, the color, it comes in so many different colors and so many different styles, and I love it. Now, let's jump into the rest of my video, and let me show you what I did with these other pieces. Now, let's get into DIY number two. For DIY number two, I'm going to take another door front, take those little things right there off, and we don't need those anymore and i'm just going to put them to the side i actually kept them because you know you just never know when you're going to need something like that y'all probably think i'm crazy for keeping all this stuff but it is what it is and i kept it now for this one after i got it all cleaned up i just went in with the white waverly chalk paint i did not use the salt wash on this one because i didn't want them exactly alike as a matter of fact they couldn't be more different whenever you see them. So I'm gonna take the white Waverly chalk paint, give it two good coats of paint on the top and on the bottom and give it a little facelift. I am so excited or honestly, I'm stunned <laughs> that I took two pieces of wood that I found in the trash and turned them into these gorgeous, gorgeous trays and like i said with the first one i wouldn't mind throwing down 80 dollars for either one of these trays because they are big like i said they're solid wood and the designs to me are just beautiful so anyway after i got my second coat of waverly chalk paint on this one and let it dry you want to make sure that your paint is really, really dry in between each coat, or at least I like to do that because to me, I just get a better outcome whenever I let it dry in between. If they're still wet when I'm trying to paint it, a lot of times I will pull my paint back up. You know what I mean? Like I'm just running the paint across it, thinking it's dry, and it's not. And instead of painting and laying paint down, I'm actually pulling up and then it glops then it leaves a big hole and then you have to go back and do all this other crap and sand it down and whatever but anyway these are some little pieces that I got off of Timu on one of my Timu hauls and I thought they were beautiful but I don't like that bright bright gold so what I did is I took these four I don't even know what they're called like little ornamental pieces and I painted them and made them match some little feet that I also got from Timu that I'm gonna show you. And I showed those to you in my Timu haul and I knew I could make them match good enough that I could put them kind of close to each other. So I'm just gonna lay out my little gold pieces and I'm going to take my antique wax by Waverly and some of that black chalk paint that you can get, chalkboard paint rather, that you can get from the Dollar Tree. First thing I'm gonna do is paint them black. Then I'm going to go back over the top of it with some of the antique wax. And I'm just going to sort of dab it on all over and sort of, I don't know, just distress it up a little bit. And then I'm going to set them aside, let them dry. Or no, I didn't. I used my hot gun. 
my heat gun. And then once I did that, I took a sanding block and sort of sanded off a little bit so some of that gold would peek back through because if you look at the little legs, the gold is still peeking through that antique brass look. And I thought they turned out pretty good. I thought I got them pretty close to matching. Now this is some more burlap that I got at the Dollar Tree. I am obsessed with this stuff, guys. There is so much that you can do with this. Now, if you watched one of my videos, three or four videos back, you saw me take a little bit of this and do it on a small tray. And I wanted to do it on a bigger scale. Now, let me show you a little trick I learned from Crafting Cousins. You find a little piece, you pull it out, and it gives you the perfect cutting line for your burlap is that not brilliant thank you girls i was so tickled to find that little shortcut to cutting burlap and i got my piece cut as big as i wanted it and then i did the same thing with this as i did with my tissue paper on the first one i got some mod podge i laid a decent coat of mod podge in the middle and then i laid my burlap down and I went back and I put more Mod Podge on the top as well as all over the edges to give it, you know, one good uniform coat and to finish it and seal everything, seal the paint in, get that burlap, you know, like sealed in. And once we've done that, we're ready to go with decorating it in other ways. Now, I couldn't quite get the burlap straight and I wish what I would have done is cut my burlap and got you know got it like I wanted it before I put it down but anyway so I struggled a little bit with trying to get it right but anyway it ended up going going just fine and as you can see it worked out perfectly so now is where I'm going to doll it up and make it gorgeous y'all i'm so in love with this transfer it's a honeybee farm wildflower honey transfer from chalk couture i'm gonna use some ink because we're doing it on fabric this is the pesto my favorite farmhouse green and i am going to chalk it or ink it as we say onto my burlap. I'm just going to do the middle piece because that's really the only part that needs to be done. So I'm going to measure it, make sure I get everything right and everything's where it should be. And then I'm going to ink my design on. Now, like we've said in the past, when you're using any kind of fabric, two things, you don't have to fuzz your stencil and you don't use paste, you use ink. Now the ink is a little bit different in that you have to heat set it. So like with this, I'm gonna use my heat gun and I'm gonna go over it several times until it sets that ink into the fabric. And if it were like a t-shirt or something, I would just use my press and press it on. But look and how beautiful this is y'all now it had some words on those stripes that i did not want showing so i took a little bit of the ink on my tip end of my finger and i just filled it in and look at that design for whatever reason bees are all the rage right now again like they were last summer and i think this design is absolutely beautiful but look how pretty those pieces now look at the bottom and then look at the top that's a huge transformation y'all and i did that on all four corners and once i got them on there i added the little feet that i got from timu and put little feet on it now these will not have handles it's just going to be like a tray that you would have you know like little feet now it's not going to be very far off of the ground but it's still a tray that is raised up with these little feet now i just put some glue on there so that I could hold my little foot in place while I'm screwing my little screws in. So that's the reason you see me using a little bit of glue. It just held it in place, you know, like I said. So because I tried two or three times to hold it there and get it screwed in and I kept dropping the, 
the screw or I would drop the little foot piece or whatever. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to stick a little piece of glue here. Anyway, once I got it done, I took some of the antique wax and the moss green and I went in and distressed it down. Now, I'm really kind of kicking myself now for distressing it down as heavy as I did because when I looked back at it before I distressed it, I liked it so much better like that. So let me know down in the comments, do you like it after it's distressed or should I have left it plain white? I very well may take the little feet and stuff off and go back and repaint the outside and take the distressing away. It just depends and sees what everybody, what their decision is. But look at how pretty this one turned out. Look at those little feet. Isn't that cute? I love this so much. And you sure can't tell that it was once a piece of garbage. Or at least I like the way it turned out. Let me know down in the comments which one is your favorite. Is it the B theme, the more simple theme? Or is it that real pretty, very elegant peony and pink theme? I happen to think the peony one is my favorite because I'm a huge pink kind of girl. I love me some pink, but I do love the bees, and I think they both turned out really, really pretty. So, I would love to know down in the comments two things. Which one of these trays is your favorite, and would you have left the distressing off of the one with the bees on it? So I'm just going to show you both of them kind of slow one more time where you can get all of the pretty detail on both of them. Look at the gorgeous salt wash finish that was able to be achieved from just using a little bit of that salt wash in your paint. I love it. Again, not sponsored, but I'm in love with that product. And look at how gorgeous this one turned out. What else would you have done with these door fronts? Tell me that. That's another thing I would like to know. Other than making these trays, what is something that you would have done with it? Because I'm curious to know what else can I do with the other two that I have left. So I cannot wait to read down in the comments what ideas you would have for them. I think these both turn out cute, but there are a million ideas out there. So throw some at me and I will pick a couple to actually do in a video in the next few weeks. If this is your first time visiting Monner's Market, welcome. My name is Brenda, but my sweet grandbabies call me Monner. I do a video, or I try to do a video, every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I have been sick, having some heart procedures done recently. I have one more to do on April the 11th. That one I'm probably going to have to cancel, though, because my husband's having major back surgery on April the 9th. But I do have one more surgery to do on my heart, and then we are done, and hopefully I will be back good as new. So that is the update for those who have been wondering how I've been doing. Thank you for the prayers. Thank you for the text and the calls and all of the ways that you guys have reached out to check on me. It meant so much. Thank you again to Flexi Spot for this gorgeous chair. It is the most beautiful, comfortable recliner. And like I said earlier, everything that you need to know about it is listed down in my description box and there are links to everything and it is amazing you will not regret buying that chair it comes in different colors and everything so anyway if you're in the live chat with me i want to say hello i love y'all and i missed you so much these past two weeks not being here i appreciate y'all hanging in there and watching some videos for me while i was out i love you to death and I hopefully will be consistent from now on between here and hopefully on out. Until my next surgery, I may have to miss one night, but anyway, or one Tuesday. But anyway, I just wanted to say I will see you next Tuesday at 8 p.m. Thank you for coming. Thank you for watching. Be blessed. Bye now.